So as we all know, the kidneys produce our urine or the wee, and the wee drains through the ureter into the bladder. Now, normally in children, when they empty their bladder, the urine flow goes into one direction out of the bladder. But occasionally, urine goes backwards and up into the kidney. This happens in about 2% of the population. In most cases, it does not give any symptoms and does not need any treatment. However, occasionally, it can cause repeated urine infections or can result in some dysfunction of the kidney on that side. How do we pick it up? It is sometimes suspected on prenatal ultrasound scan. And we would then investigate further once the baby is born. It is not something that needs urgent investigation. And therefore you will find that the baby may be started on a small dose of antibiotic just to prevent infection. And then we would investigate further. Sometimes children will present with urine infections. These urine infections are usually associated with a high fever over 38 degrees. The diagnosis involves a test which depends on the age of the child. If the child is less than one year of age, we would start with a test called a micturating cystourethrogram or an MCUG for short. This test involves radiation and the insertion of a urethral catheter and therefore should only be performed in very selected cases. In older children who are toilet trained, we would suggest a MAG3 cystogram, which is a different test performed in the nuclear medicine department and does not need a catheter. These are the two tests by which we would diagnose for psychoureteric reflux, also known as kidney reflux. The psychoureteric reflux or kidney reflux is a congenital abnormality, i.e. most children are born with it. And what happens in this situation is that the ureter, so the tube that drains urine into the bladder, might enter the bladder in a slightly abnormal position. In many cases, this fixes itself on its own, so the reflux can get better with time. But occasionally there's a malformation of that side of the urinary tract and the reflux doesn't get better and can be associated with a, a dysplastic or scarred kidney. And those are the cases that do need investigation and follow up. As a result, some patients may start to suffer from urine infections. the vast majority of patients do not have any symptoms and do not require further management. However, some children will present with urine infections. In a baby, this can present with high fever. The baby can't really say there are other symptoms. So if a baby is suffering from a high fever with no other symptoms, it is, um, urine is always tested during the initial investigation. Sometimes urine inf infection in infants can be rather severe and require hospital admission. In older children, the urine infections can be a little less obvious. Children can present of pain on voiding or needing to go to the toilet a lot. Sometimes there is a mild fever. And again, the diagnosis rests on a urine culture. It is really important to not just dipstick the urine, as some parents and GPs do, do, but also to send it to a lab, as the lab diagnosis is really important for further investigation and management. Urine infections which present to a GP are usually the type that are treated with short courses of antibiotics. If you find that a child is having repeated urine infections and repeated courses of antibiotics, especially if this is associated with frequency of going to the toilet, sometimes accidents, 
sometimes constipation, then that is the kind of uh, patient who would need to be seen by a specialist. Younger patients, such as babies, can be admitted to hospital after a first urine infection. And I suggest that babies should be referred to a specialist after their first urine infection. Once again, it is important to stress that the majority of reflux does not need treatment. However, once we diagnose reflux, we can grade it into five grades. Grade one and two are very mild and usually don't cause any symptoms. And we would not normally offer active treatment for grade one and two. Grades three to five are more severe grades. And in that situation, we, could, we would carry out further investigation to find out the status of the kidney via a special scan called the DMSA. The initial management is starting the patient on a small dose of antibiotic, usually taken every evening, which prevents urine infections on the premise that this reflux may improve on its own. As previously mentioned, reflux often improves on its own during the first couple of years of life. However, if the baby or children develop a urine infection in spite of being on a preventative antibiotic, then we would offer surgical intervention. The first line surgical intervention is minimally invasive. It does not involve open surgery or cuts, and it can be performed through the child's bladder. And what we do in this situation is we inject a biodegradable paste, usually called deflux, into the ureteric orifice inside the bladder. And this helps to reduce the reflux up into the kidney. The procedure is rather straightforward, it takes less than half an hour, and the child is able to go home the same day. In boys, we would normally also recommend a circumcision as circumcision has been proven to reduce the incidence of urine infections tenfold in children who are at higher risk of urine infections, such as, such as boys with VUR. Very rarely, endoscopic injection or the minimally invasive procedure does not work as well as we would like it to. And in that situation, then we may need to proceed to what we call a ureteric reimplantation which is actual surgery that replumbs the ureter into the bladder. There's various ways of performing a ureteric reimplantation. It can be done by a small incision in the groin or can be done by keyhole surgery, which would be either laparoscopic or robotic assisted, depending on the center that performs the surgery. In older children who are toilet trained, Reflux may be secondary to something called bladder dysfunction. So sometimes in children who continue to wet after the age of five, especially if they have urine infections, sometimes compounded with constipation, reflux can develop as a secondary phenomenon. In that situation, we would first manage the con constipation and bladder dysfunction, and that will usually settle the symptoms. Very rarely, a deflux or minimally invasive procedure is required in addition to the management of the bladder dysfunction and constipation. Further information will be explained to you by your consultant pediatric urologist.